The what? The, 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 the stop the app. Four letter word. The fuck? I don't feel like you know me. <laughs> Maybe it was all oh, you guys. So it is the fall. It is the fall, and uh, we're talking about temptation. Where sin, the enemy still try to trick us today, which is sin. Try to tempt us to. Um, to sin, God does not tempt us. God does not tempt us. He does test us, but He does not tempt us. The enemy tempt us to get to sin. So do not think like temptation. Think God is testing you. Know that is an enemy trying to tempt. You. We see this in Matthew Matthew chapter four, where the enemy, when Satan trying to tempt Jesus, what does Jesus use to defeat the enemy? What does He use? Huh? Scripture. Good job. He used scripture. So that's the same thing as we do as the Father of Jesus. We must also do the same thing. So this is uh, to tonight's scripture. We're going to Galatians chapter five. Galatians chapter five, verse sixteen through twenty-six. We're going to talk about the spirit versus the flesh. That's not the title today. That is not a title. But we're going to talk about the focus on these two things today. Um, Mary, be pressed. Yes. Thank you. What? Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 to 26. Amen. That's how I need to test. And it's up to the first one. We're going to Because she's five. Uh, no, we to go five. No, I didn't. one. And the bubbles for verse 16 through 26. It's one of those. Demon. Let's be inside. I did. I did. I did. I did. That was a. Arrow there. And. Blaze. Alright. So. It reads, I say then, walk by the Spirit, and you will certainly not carry out the desire of the flesh. For the flesh desire what is against the Spirit, and the Spirit desire whatever, what against the flesh. These are opposed to each other, so that you do, don't do what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, moral impurity, um, promiscuous, idolatry, solitary, hatred, jealousy, upstairs of anger, selfish ambition, factions, envy, drunkenness, and anything similar. I am warning you about these things, as I warned you before, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, Faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The ball is not against such things. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with his passion and desire. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provo um, provoking one another in and envying one another as well. Today's title is called The Lust of of the flesh. The lust of the flesh. Uh, first, before we start, I want to share uh, one of my craving special types of food, which I'm having tomorrow for lunch with one of my friends. I love these some ramen. Now, now don't why it's been my favorite comfort food for the past probably year. I have my favorite, my favorite ramen place is actually here in Arlington, uh, across the street from um, UTA. Uh, and it's just really delicious. I love um, spicy ramen. Do not know why. It's during my comfort suit when I'm sad, it's having some ramen. I can have in a hot day. I do not care. Usually, ramen is break or the cold, and it is fantastic in the cold. But I can eat it at hot. I can eat it anytime because I love me some ramen. I wish I could have some right here and show it to y'all and beat y'all tempted to have some. So good. No. So. 
Uh, what are some foods you guys like? Name some stuff. What are some foods you love to create? Hot sauce. Bad hot sauce. Or not. Bus done there. Canes. Hot sauce up there. Hot hot. I thought. Huh? Oh, you cooked salad. Salad day. Hey. So. A raw yep. egg. Burrito. Doritos. Or burritos. With a B. What? Burritos. Okay. So, so we have these food cravings that is very tempting, especially when we're hungry, we get these. So we have physical cravings at time, which is not a bad thing. And most, and most of the time, there are times like, it's not harmless, you know, if we eat properly, it's not harmless to get, you know, our favorite foods here and there. It's not harmless to do that. But it's our signal that we're hungry or tired or what, or what happens because of what we have. However, the enemy can use our flesh. The enemy can use our flesh to lure us into temptation, to give into physical pleasure in a way that causes us what is sin. So, what? What? My was my name. Something that so you start thinking there's nothing and we move to eat out. Just keep going. Okay, I'm a bet. I like. All right, so here we go. So. Let's get some context in Galatians today. So in our context today, Paul's writing towards a church that where he started his ministry in the journey of Galatia, which is in the book that for Galatians. These are the people of the Galatians. Paul was writing to the people in um, that were in accord with the claims of legalism and Judaism. What do you mean? The legalism of Judah, who were telling the people uh, that were believers that they must be circumcised and keep the law of Moses to order be saved. So they're still trying to keep the Old Testament law, which means to have the covenant of God and be under his grace in the Old Testament, you have to be circumcised. Now, what is the new covenant we have from New Testament to today? What is the covenant we have? Uh, believe in believe in who? Jesus. Jesus. Jesus is our new covenant. But they were trying to keep the legal of the Old Testament. If you remember, even though the New Testament was not made yet, he had the Old Testament. The Old Testament, he had to and obey the law of Moses. Paul here is writing that, that they are saved by the work of Jesus, and he left the gift of the Holy Spirit, which is why we're going to get into what it means to walk with the Spirit and to help them lead and change in their hearts. When we are walking with the Spirit, it's going to change our hearts. Just following the law does not just save us, but when we keep it close in tune with the Holy Spirit, it will lead us to do with the will of God and not the desires of flesh. That's why the close, you see Jesus be intimate with his father, with the Holy Spirit, the will of God. And just like him, he wants us as followers to do the same, to keep close to the Holy Spirit so we could do the will of the Father on earth. So we see in chapter five, God's spirit at sinful nature. So the sinful nature is the flesh that is a humbling. Following, that means walking by the spirit will ensure that one avoids sinful desires. So this is also parallel to Matthew chapter 6 and 24. That you can't serve two masters. You cannot serve two masters. So that means your lifestyle or how to live is just as important. So that means if you go to church every Sunday, that is good. But let's say Monday to Friday and Saturday, you are sitting and having a party in the world. That is your living, you are serving to master. We are not supposed to be serving to master. So, so walk by the spirit is, is a promise. If one walks by the spirit, then what follows from that is one not fulfilling the desire of the flesh. That means not the desires of what the enemy try to tip us. So does who are led by the spirit of God are children of him? So we want to be children of God. Let's be children of God. We need to walk with the spirit. So what is the flesh? Well, let's, well what is the flesh? We do have flesh. We can't run away from it. We're in the flesh. So the flesh in chapter 5, verse 17 to 24, refers to the human trait that contributes to one, one disposition of sin, also known as the old sin nature. We have a sinful nature, born sinner. He traits that even if believers still have results of one descent from Adam, we all come from Adam, and that's how we fall short. So for an unbeliever, living according to the flesh is the only option. Both believers and unbelievers have the flesh, and both can do other things. 
But Paul is encouraging his followers to be led by the Holy Spirit because it is a gift from Jesus. Paul be accept the gift from God that he lived like could have lived and died. Did. God. So the gift of the Son, Jesus, is a gift. So because you can't serve two masters. You can't serve the Mavericks. That's like tonight, you can't be a fan of the Mavericks and the Celtics. You can't go for both for when you got it, pick one. Or, you know, you'll be baked fun of, or you'll be like me, you're trying to enjoy a good match. I already don't care if IT sucks. So, Paul tells them that we must be walking in line with the Spirit. We need to be on the team with the Spirit, not the team with the flesh. Look, when, do we, when we do align with the Spirit, we do get rewards. We do get rewards. And that is the fruit of the spirit, which explains is explains in verse 22. We have joy. We have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Those are the gifts of the spirit when we walk. So that's we that means when times are tough and you see that someone is really down, but you still see joy in their heart. You see that they are walking with the spirit. So joy will not affect when you good, when good times are happy, bad times are happy. You still have joy in your life when you're aligned with the spirit. So, um, so as believers, we are a part of the new covenant and are not under the unslavey, unhelpful law with the new covenant of Jesus. When you are a follower of Jesus, you are walking with the spirit that under the law. As we know from the content of the book, they wanted people to live under Moses. But we live under Jesus that followed him, which he still applies of the Old Testament. That's why it's so important to read it. But they walk under the spirit because the flesh is at a disadvantage. When the spirit leads, he takes initiative and empower and equip the believer. That's why it's important to be with the spirit. The leading of the spirit is an objective entitlement of being converted as is having one flesh crucified in verse 24 and be made alive by the spirit and reads in verse 25. All right. It's a lot. It's a lot of you, but it's very important. The law cannot provide such power and motivation for godly that so doesn't mean because you obey the law, doesn't mean because you tithe and you go to church and you read the Bible, does not mean it guarantee you to go live a godly life. That's what the people try to do um, to the Galatians. Now, we have an understanding of walking in the spirit versus the flesh. We're reading in verse 19 and 21. It's the works of the flesh. So this means that according to fill this command, you need good theology, you need good doctrine, and the objective to input. So it's important to understand the context of the book. You need to understand the basic terms of what a Christian is. So if someone asks me, what is the gospel? Also, ex now I'm not expecting y'all to give me a theology answer, dive deep and all that. But you should know the basics of Jesus, of the free good gifts of Jesus that lived by the middle end, died death, we should have died, it rose from the grave to give us a way to salvation to, to the Father and to the and, and have the Holy Spirit in our heart. That's a lot. But I say it every time I preach. So it should be stuck in your knife. Does that understand that? Mm -hmm. This is important to know when we are especially walking in this world and staying with the spirit to understand this part of need. So you need to know the foundation of your faith and understand the spirit by reading your Bible, coming to Sunday school, coming to Wednesday night, and having friends to encourage you. You need to have a good foundation. So... So just like Merrick, he needs to have a good foundation. So when he goes to college, he has that foundation, finding a good church home. Even though he's away, he still have that foundation in his faith. So that the see your thoughts always be walking with the spirit. So, sorry, Merrick, how to put you? So walking by the spirit means avoiding certain things that cares that will carry the flesh, which means sexual morality. Spirit, um, your spirit, the spirituality, the people say I'm spiritual, uh, magic and witchcraft, relationship that is divided, and you've also social sin, which also in drunkenness and, and etc. That is avoiding the fruit of the spirit or avoiding the Holy Spirit or some that something that does not align with the Holy Spirit. But verse 22 to 23 show what it by walking by the spirit, the fruit. Image often refers to good works. 
So remember, that's the Paul is not saying that your works get you salvation. Your works upon the church, reading your Bible, does not give you salvation. That is the work of salvation. That's the work salvation movement that you have to work to get to heaven. And that is not what Paul is trying to teach here. These fruits expressed by every believer who has the spirit indwelling them as such to testify that the believer in question is destined for the kingdom. So you could know someone's a believer by their fruit. That is the verse. If you know whoever is a believer is by their fruits, not just by saying, oh, I'm a Christian, but you go act like your Satan child. Your fruit is supposed to show that you are a follower of Jesus, not just your words, but your action. That's why I say your actions are just as important as a Christian than just your words. So we do need the law. We do need the law. The law is needed to regulate the ungodly life, but the spirit leads for transformation and plus the spirit has a transformation heart. Holy Spirit helps you with the transformation heart. The flesh belongs to the believer's past. The fruit belongs to the believer's present and eternity. So we're living for eternity. We're not living just for now. We're living for eternity. That's what the fruit belongs to. So at the end of the day, to live by the Spirit is to have a new life. The equality of a salvation. We have salvation. We have a fight under Jesus. And this is not just a one-time thing and I'm good and, and try to do it. This is a lifestyle. This is a lifestyle. To live by the Spirit is a lifestyle. To follow Him, it tells four saintly fleshly habits. Which finally, oof, we said first point. What? First point, I know. First point is do not love what the world offers. Do not love what the world offers. Do you resist physical temptation or is it easy to give in? Do you resist the physical temptation or is it so easy to get in? Like, oh, so fun. Feels so good. Some of us don't struggle with lust of the flesh. For others, it's very deep. Regardless, scripture has hope for us to resist. We first read in 1 John, not, not the book of John, not the gospel of John, but 1 John chapter 2, verse 16, it reads, For everything in the world, the uh, for everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride in one possession is not from the Father, but from the world. What does that mean? What does that mean? So John is writing towards Asia Maya. He's writing toward this to Asia. And here that they were forcing too much of the flesh instead. Of Jesus. So the audience, they're trying to force too much of the flesh instead of giving for Jesus. So there are three things the world offers. First of them is the lust of the flesh. What's that? It promises to satisfy legitimate desires in ill in illegitimate ways. That means the lust of the flesh. That means eating is legitimate. We need to eat, right? We just need today, I'm hungry, we need to eat. Now what need is worldly. That means eating too much. That's to the world. Because food is so good and everything, but we do need to watch what we eat. We eat too much and gluttony, that's a sin. That's what we eat. We're going to get something to eat. Sex is legitimate. Sex and gluttony is made with an image between man and woman. Genesis 2. It is good. But, immorally, we try to take the world outside. That means sex outside of marriage. That means going out, cooking up. Trust me, y'all know my testimony. I used to be a player. That was not the way God So, we see, and the list goes on and on and on and on, just like, you know, Jesus changed water to wine, and, you know, with that, but drunkenness, getting too much and out of control from your body, that's towards the world. So, we see the lust of the flesh to fill the desire in illegitimate ways. Number two, the lust of the eyes. The lust of the eyes. The world tips your mind through what your eyes see which is desiring and pursuing that which is not legitimate for you to have. Number three is the pride in one possession, living to impress others. Living to impress others. What we for, forget in the world is the world with its lust is passing away. Whatever is cool right now is probably not going to be cool 10, 20 years. It may come back a little bit, but it's like the 80s is completely different from 
from today. I promise you that because this time is going to go. That's what we forget. People love to live uh, trying to oppress people and make money of that. But what we forget in the world is the world with the lust. And worldliness makes the now more important than eternity. The world trying to make world, worldliness makes the now more important than eternity. Remember, when you follow Christ and the follower of Jesus, you are living for eternity, not for living for the now. But you are passing through it. The world is passing by. So when we pass away, the world's going to keep up. That's why we need to focus on eternity, not just now. So, so basically, the price tag from loving the world is loss of personal intimacy with God. When we love the things of the world, we do is the personal intimacy we have. So Jesus' warning to the disciple is that temptation offer temporary prayer for the flesh, the eyes, and life. Uh, excuse me, and the temporary, the temporary of cravings for the flesh, the eyes, and also for life. So today, we're going to focus on the flesh. We're going to try to dive in. Which leads to point number two. Resist the temptations of the flesh. Resist the temptation of the flesh. There's a big difference between desire of the flesh and desire of the spirit. There's nothing in between. You can't have both a desired flesh and a desire of the spirit. So, summary of the difference between the flesh and the spirit. It couldn't be more different. Verse 17 says that they are literally opposite to each other. There's opposite. There's nothing in the middle. You can't be both. There's two opposite of the flesh and the spirit. The key in resisting temptation in our flesh is to walk with the spirit. Scripture is clear. When you walk by the spirit, you have no room to walk with flesh. Let me, um, living with the power of the Holy Spirit is conquering sinful desire. The flesh and spirit conflict. By the by the lead by the spirit, by leading with the spirit, not under the bodies trying to please God by let alone observe from the law, try to be us controlling of the law, try to please God with all the obedience of the law. Uh, this means not have the legalism mindset, but have the spiritual mindset, have the kingdom mindset. The Greek word for leading the spirit to subvert that implies an active personal involvement with the Holy spirit that's the personal relationship with jesus that he wants the spirit active present in believer lives in us shows that they're no longer living in the flesh as they did before so that means when you give your life to christ you are living under the holy spirit it strives to learn more and grow your relationship with the holy spirit let him need or attract so without the transformational work of the holy spirit Sinful humans follow wicked desires. When evil spirit comes and reject the ways of God, it will destroy the things in the world and relationships, not and relationship that we have around us, not just God, but people on our earth as well. So sin will disrupt your relationship with God. It will not you be close to God when you continue to sin. You will not hear the voice of God. But not only that, it will also interrupt relationships sin interrupt marriages that leads to divorce it leads to friend and interrupt with friendships it interrupt boyfriends and girlfriends it interrupt multiple things because of sin just look at time as their life people who have sinned and ruined the relationship and you have been hurt or maybe vice versa maybe you is something if i knew why to get someone or or whatever it is sin had interrupt relationships with us as humans, but also sin goes against God because God is of holy nature. That's why Jesus had to come in. If we have a wig, we have faith. He give us the gift of the Holy Spirit to come and come out. See, hell, not in the works. So, I give you all a lot of information today, and I did not really want to tie this down, but this is really critical for today's culture. We live in a culture where we have everything on our phone. We love to follow the latest trends. We like to listen to all this music. And we always have a lot to change. That could change your perspective on anything but the Bible says. So when evil spirit comes and rejects the ways of God, it will destroy the things in the world and relationship, 
not just with God, but with people, because we see it all over. Remind me, when you walk in the flesh, it will cost you. When you walk in the flesh, it will cost you. The consequence of sin will come. These who act in the way of life do not have the Holy Spirit. If we can't dive deep into this, but we can know the consequences will lead outside of God's view of the Bible. Be not only spiritually dead, but sin can also lead to physical death. We see that all around the world today, and even the past, and even the Bible. So, if you walk by Christ, if you walk with the Spirit, it will cost you. But verse 24 says that anyone who belongs to Christ has crucified the flesh. So that means you you have to cost your flesh. You have to cost your will. It's going to hurt. It's going to include any passion, desire that are not from God. But the difference, but the difference is this. You will produce fruit, good character, and not the things in the world, but for things for eternity. That's where the gifts come from when you reach the heaven and God said, well done. In the world, it will not only last until you die physically and that's it. The world will you achieve all these achievements. Let's say you get all the money. Let's say have all the money. Where the money goes when you die. You can't bring it with you. There's nothing wrong of being getting money and all that. Having a good job and taking care of your family. There's nothing wrong with that. But money is your God or as line as your relationship with God. That's where the problem is. No matter how many followers you have, no matter how how many people the world knows what your name is and etc., or try to be in the low man being like I'm ten top famous or all that everything, it doesn't matter when you pass and you can't take that with you. But the things of the fruit of the spirit and the things that impact lives to touch people's souls to make sure they can have a loving relation with Christ last for eternity. And one thing I learned is, is if I wrong about God, I wasted my life, which I don't regret because I have love and wife. I have a love relationship with people and I connected great connections and great memories. And that's all I can ask for. But if they're wrong about Jesus, that's their eternity. You just. Paul was trying to show the attitude that are causing problems in the Galatian church. They live according to the flesh, but Paul is speaking how you should live with the spirit. Resisting temptation in your flesh come naturally when you crucify your life and follow Jesus, which you need to pick up your cross every day. Walking the spirit in life is an everyday sacrifice. Not just the one time we get baptized, not the one time you finally accept him, it's an everyday thing. That's when you got called repentance, even for the sin that you made it. You may not even know you did. Because we are not, we are not perfect. We are still sinful nature because of our flesh and what Adam did. But that's why we put our faith in Jesus. Which leads to our last point, and we're done. Don't be quick. It said, guard your mind. Guard your mind. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. It said, finally, brothers and sisters, Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pert, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable. If there is any moral excellent, and if there is anything praise, praiseworthy, well, dwell in these things. That means you got to dwell everything in the spirit. There is a direct connection between what we think about and how we live. If you think of godly things, if you think of good news of Jesus, you will walk in the spirit. If you think of worldly things and you give in to the flesh. Paul is writing toward the, um, to the uh, to Philippians, uh, Philippian, uh, Philippian, a Roman colony. Here, Paul wants the people to live joyfully in every circumstance. So that means when good things happen, live joyfully. When things get bad, live joyfully because we have the goodness of Jesus. That's the good thing is. It's okay when we feel down. It doesn't mean when life hit us hard or we're also the lowest. But the one thing is Jesus still rose from the dead no matter what our feeling is. I think that's the blessing that when we have encouraged when we have the church. It's okay to express that. He said vulnerability is our superpower in this space. I want y'all to express your feelings. Because guess what? God is still good and that's one thing. My eternity is still safe. That's why. No matter the good, the bad, or the ugly, we should always live in the joy of the Lord. We have that mindset. God does give us peace. 
but we must hold on to it because the enemy will try to take that away. We don't want to lose our peace in the next hour or the next day. One of the reasons we don't keep our peace is because we tend to dwell on the things that are set in opposition to the peace we are asking for. That's why the one of the fruit of the Spirit is peace. We must ask ourselves if we are able to praise God for the things that we are dwelling on. If we can't, then we'll soon lose the peace that God has given us. We are called to guard our minds. When we protect it, we protect the way we live, the way we act. And we see this in Colossians 3, said to set our mind on things of heaven, not on the things on earth. That means set on the things of the Holy Spirit, set on the things of prayer, set on the things that are good news of the gospel, because that gives us lo love, joy, peace, and we're able to express that to people. So even when we're down, the people have said, like, you have a light on you. You're able to share that because Jesus is light. By guarding our minds and thinking of things from heaven, we practice resisting temptation effectively. Guard your mind and see how it protects your flesh from giving to temptation. Before we end, I want you to let you know, um, imagine you see a big stone. There's a big stone over here. And down the area is all family, your purpose, and all that, etc. Down here. You are trying to protect it, and the stone is your heart. It is your heart. So with that, sin is trying to push that, push that, push that to the stone. Yeah, when we fall this short, but we're able to catch it really, really quickly, where it's easy. But we keep on letting sin come out, come out. The, the stone is going to roll at fast and will be so hard to finally stop it. For we ruin our relationship with people, ruin our cup, and ruin um, being in Jesus' presence because of what sin already done. You guys already know my testimony, and I share it vulnerably because I have lost people, I have hurt people because of my selfish desires, because of what I want to do, and because of that, I lost many good friends, I lost many good wife material women, it because of my sinful nature, but because. I finally gave my life to Christ. It actually followed his will because his will is better than mine. He's able to restore me to become the man who I am today. And because of that, I put guards around it. I put accountability. I put the word of God, read it, understand it, memorize scripture. Because the key thing is to guard it so that me, the, my heart does not fall to sin. So I'm able to break these relationships because that's not what God wants. And our goal to keep the mindset. Some people say we're trying to get back to the garden and eat it. Because the first two chapters is perfect. That's where God was created for. Until sin comes in and corrupts it. And sin is still doing that today. Because we have a sinful nature. So remember to keep your eye on the gospel. Don't be ashamed of the gospel that Jesus lived a life and couldn't live. Died and then we should not get Because of his word. And his, him, um, resurrection from the dead to give us salvation to the Father. That's the key thing for us to remember that the gospel is good music for us. And that's why it's important when you do give your life to Christ, fully give your life to Christ. Not just part of it, fully and walk with the spirit. You'll have this light that you see in the scripture. So. Guard your mind by standing on the things that are above, not on the things that you just see here on the earth. When you guard your mind, you will begin to walk in the spirit and resist the temptation in the flesh by walking with the Holy Spirit, which is the gift of the Trinity that Jesus had given to his disciples so that we could fight the opponent, Satan, and save unbelievers in this world. Let's pray. Therefore, we're going to say thank for this sermon. It was a hard sermon to preach. It was a hard sermon to give a lot of context and a lot of things that said, but it was a message that we needed to hear to remind ourselves to follow the spirit, to be in the spirit, because it's not just, it's not just having the relationship. It's also applying it and guarding our hearts. And that means we apply it every day. So that means we can be, um, build fruit to show people your light and your love. We love you. We praise you. We worship you. And crash your break. Amen. Amen.